Next week on Arts Upload, we'll share a story about how the UMKC Conservatory gets ready for the big crescendo program. And judging from what you're about to see, they also do a good job teaching media and filmmaking. It's a student-made project about Arnie Young, a jazz drummer we often see quite a bit of around Mardi Gras time. All right, let me see what I can do with the names. Mm. Julian Schempf is the director-editor, working along with Kyle Wombledoff and Justin Longmire. Play drums and cymbals and uh, other various instruments, percussion, flute. Uh, mainly that's just for composing, that's how I compose. But mainly I play the drum set, which consists of drums and cymbals. It's called the drums, but it's really the drums and cymbals. Cymbals are a big part of it. I'm from uh, um, Paola, Kansas. That's it, that's where I'm from. You know, I moved here when I was 17, so, man, during the time I've, I've been here ever since then, that was like 1963, you know, and like, but, but in that time I've also spent about 12 or 13 years in other cities. Like I lived in San Francisco for eight years, I lived in New York for a couple of years, I lived in LA a little bit, you know, I've moved around, you know, so, but I end up back here. It's kind of like a whirlpool or something, I don't know. And I've been here 27 years now, this last stretch. I started playing professionally when I was about four, I guess I was 15 then. And I played in terrible bars out in Kansas. There was a guy my stepdad knew who was a guitar player, and he'd come pick me up. And I had a pituitary deficiency, so I looked like I was like seven or eight years old, even though I was in high school. And I'd go play in these horrible dives out in Kansas, just terrible, I mean, biker bars and stuff. <laughs> Well, my style is is also, uh, it's a group effort, you know, it's not just me. It's like I have a group with uh, really great musicians, and they're not necessarily jazz musicians per se. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Some of them go out and play straight ahead jazz gigs, other guys don't. Like Patrick Alonzo Smith-Conway is this fantastic musician. Now, he's not a jazz guy, but he plays alto sax in my band. He's, now he's playing bassoon, too, through effects, man. It's awesome. And then, like, he happens to be the best conga player, Afro-Cuban conga player in, in Kansas City. So we have percussion in my group. Sometimes the whole group, my group's called the Rough Tet. We're dedicated to rough jazz. We don't like smooth jazz. You know, we think jazz should be rough. And it's not just jazz oriented. We use a lot of different kinds of music in our music. Like sometimes we might all be on percussion. Sometimes we might all be on bamboo flutes. So we use traditional non-Western instruments. But mainly we use like, uh, and we got a guy that does electronic music. See, that's, that's important to me to have something that fits the sound profile of this time we're living in. I'm not trying to recreate what happened in 1965 or something. You know, that's great. I was, back then I was, but it's not 1965. You know, if there was even 10 or 20, I mean, if you go back and look at the 30s, the heyday of Kansas City jazz, Kansas City was the top place in the nation in the 30s. Swing was invented here. Swing is Kansas City's gift to the world. Today, because of Bobby Watson coming back 16 years ago and taking over the jazz program at UMKC, 
has become a magnet for all these great young musicians that come here. And guess what? Like, for instance, Ben Lifer is one of the finest bassists anywhere, I think. He moved to New York for a year and a half. He didn't like it. He came back and lives here. People are moving here from other towns because the scene is so hot. But what we don't have is clubs. We don't. There were, were five jazz clubs. Take five. There's uh, the Majestic, there's the Blue Room, and there's uh, Green Lady. They have jazz like seven nights a week, I think, upstairs and down. That's a good thing. And that that's really, uh, but then there was uh, Broadway jazz. That's gone. Take Five's gone. And so there's just nowhere for all these great young musicians to play. It's really tragic. I mean, like I said, if there were 10 jazz clubs in town, even I'd be working. Somebody needs to step up and get some balls and open a couple of jazz clubs. If there were a few more clubs here that had jazz, and there are, there are a few opening up, and it's getting better, you know, but there's just not enough places for all these great young musicians that live here to play. I think jazz is very much alive. I mean, it's been shot full of holes for the last 100 and some years, and it's still going, man.